worship, worship the Lord and magnify his name. Worship, worship the Lord and praise his holy name. Worship, worship the Lord and magnify his social media and you will be blessed of the Lord by joining us on today. You can support our efforts by mailing in your tithe and your donations to Greater St. Mark Church of God in Christ, P.O. Box 19, Memphis, Tennessee 38101. You also can give by way of Gilify to Greater St. Mark Church of God in Christ. Also by way of Cash App dollar sign greater st mark kojic also going to ask you to subscribe to our youtube channel and there you will find us under my name dr ronald e roth ministries that is dr ronald e r o l f e ministries I want to ask you to pray for the sick and the bereaved also to remember you can share and partake of what we do on live stream on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., as well as on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. for our Faith and Deliverance Service Bible study from a remote location. I'm going to ask you today to prepare to share with us today virtually because it is the first Sunday of the month and we share in our Lord's broken body and shed blood. And although you're not here with us physically, you can share with us spiritually so go ahead and get those elements wherever you may be, whatever bread you may have, whatever the fruit of the vine you may have. 
we will bless those elements at the end of the message on today and you will share in our Lord's holy communion. So I'm going to ask you to do that. The music department is coming back again and following that we will have our prayer and our scripture and our music department will come back again. And then yours truly, Dr. Ronald E. Roth will come with the message on today. Again, thank you for joining us on behalf of my wife, Lady Paula Griffin Roth, who's viewing as well. I want to thank you for being with us on today. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching us. We really and tremendously appreciate how you encourage us to continue the word of the Lord and the work of the ministry. Remember us in your prayers, and God bless you as you are blessed on today. Amen. Amen. Worship! Worship the Lord and praise his holy name. Worship! Worship the Lord and magnify his name. Worship! Worship the Lord and praise his holy name. Worship! Worship the Lord. Come on, make some noise, everybody. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad from the top. Worship the Lord and praise his holy name. Worship, worship the Lord and magnify his name. Worship, worship the Lord and praise his holy name. Worship. Make a joyful noise. Come on, Grace St. Mark. Make a joyful noise, all ye people. Sing a song. Sing a song to the Lord of his goodness and his mercy. Yeah. And his faithfulness. Let's say that again. Make a joyful noise, all ye people. Sing a song to the Lord. Yeah. Of his goodness and his mercy. Of his faithfulness. Worship. Worship the Lord and praise his holy name. Worship, worship the Lord. Yeah. And magnify his name. Worship, worship the Lord and praise his holy name. Come on, worship. Worship the Lord and magnify his name. What's his name? Jesus. 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 Hold it, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise his holy name. Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise his holy name. Can't stop. Can't stop. Amen. What's that? What's the highest praise? Hallelujah is the highest praise. If you can't stop giving God praise, come on and get up on your feet and give God some praise. Get up on your feet and give him some glory. Who woke you up this morning? Who started you on your way? Who made death behave? Who healed your body when you could not get well? In the name of Jesus, oh God, we just want to thank you today. We just want to give you praise. We want to give you glory. God, we welcome you in this place, oh God. Come on in, Lord. Make you a bold, oh God. Touch everyone in the sound of my voice, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you. 
thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We magnify you. We glorify you. There's nobody like you, Lord. You're in the class all by yourself. Lord, we had 10,000 tongues. We praise you with everyone. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy of all the honor, Lord. You're worthy, God, of all the praise, oh God. Oh God, we want to thank you. We want to magnify you, God. Come on in this place, oh Lord. You're welcome in this place, oh Lord. There's none like you, Lord. Wonderful God. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Counselor. Oh God, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for closing us in our right mind. Thank you, Lord, for life itself. Thank you, Lord, your life saved our life. God, we just want to tell you thank you. God, we can't make it without you. God, we are nothing without you. God, we need you in this place, oh God. We need you, God, in this last hour, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we want to thank you, Lord. There's been a sick among us, God. Heal right now, God. Send your healing touch, God. Send your healing virtue, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, you was wounded by our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, Lord. And with your stripes, God, we are healed. Who healed the brokenhearted? Who bounded up all that wounds in the name of Jesus. We come against coronavirus right now. We cast it out of the atmosphere. We send it back to the very pit of hell in which it came in the name of Jesus. And I speak Psalm 91 over greater St. Mark right now. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall yeah. abide under the shadow of the Almighty in the name of Jesus. Continue to touch Pastor Roth. Continue to touch First Lady Roth, God. And yes, God is able. How many of you know he's able to do a seating abundantly above all all that would be asked to think in the name of Jesus. God, we love you. God, we praise you. God, we worship you. God, there's none like you. God is able in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The highest praise. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. There's none like thee, oh, Lord, in the name of Oh, thank you, Lord. Glory to your high name. Oh, glory to your name. Yes, to your will. Yes, to your way. Yes, all day. Yes, every day in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you. Touch every man woman, boy, and girl, in the name of Jesus. Let something be said today, oh God, to encourage the believer that sinners will be saved and that backslide will be reclaimed. Get in the priest's word on today, God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. God, we worship you. We adore you in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. I will bless all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make a boast in the lord yeah. the humble shall hear thereof and be glad oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears they looked unto him and they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivered him. Oh, taste and see. <laughs> oh, taste and see yeah. that the Lord is good. Blessed to the man that trusted in him. May God have a blessing to the reader, the hearer, and the doer of his holy word. Come on, give God some praise, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a God. God is able to do just what he said he would do. Come on. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up. Come on, go ahead and say my. He's able. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made. He's able. He's able. God is able. Come on, everybody. God. God is able. able to do just what he said he would do. Yeah. He's going to. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. 
Can you just give God a wave offering out there? Can you give us some hearts this morning on the screen? He's able. He's able. Oh. 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 He's able. You don't have to touch your neighbor, just wave. Oh. 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 Don't give up on God. Don't give, give up on God. Cause he won't give up Everybody. on you. Everybody. He's able. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's able. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Last time. God, God is able. able to. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. We have something special prepared for you this morning, Greater St. Mark. There's an old song. It says, it talks about the Holy Ghost. Does anybody know anything about the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost got over, over me. Let's give us the choir a hand clap of praise on today. Just about the break of day, yeah. Jesus came and he touched me, and he washed all my sins away. I started running, I started shouting, cause I found no time for doubting. Oh, I, I found nothing but the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It was early one morning, Woo. just about the break of day. Jesus came and he touched Sing me song. and he washed all my sins away. I started running, I started shouting, cause I found no time for doubting. Oh, I, I got nothing but the Holy, Holy Ghost, but the Holy, Holy Ghost. Let me say it again. It was early yeah. one morning, just about the break of day. Yeah. Jesus came and he touched me and he washed all my sins away. I started running, I started shouting, because I found no time for doubting. Oh, I, I got, got nothing, nothing but, the but the Holy Ghost, Ghost but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. save me, save me, Holy, Holy Ghost, set me set free, me free. Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost. change, change my life. life. Holy Ghost, oh, I got nothing but the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost, the Holy Holy Ghost, save me, save me, Holy Ghost, set me free, Holy Ghost, 
joining us, Greater St. Mark, Church of God in Christ, on social media, and we thank God for the Lord's people that have gathered here on this beautiful Lord's Day. As I mentioned earlier, just in case you're joining us on social media, you can support our efforts by mailing in your donations to Greater St. Mark, Church of God in Christ, P.O. Box 19, Memphis, Tennessee, 38101. You also can give by way of Gillify to Greater St. Mark Church of God in Christ. You also can give by way of Cash App, the dollar sign Greater St. Mark Kojic. You also can view our sermons preached by yours truly by subscribing to our YouTube channel. You can view them as well without subscribing, but I pray that you will subscribe, and that is to Dr. Ronald E. Roth Ministries. Please stay with us and hear the conclusion of the entire matter on today because we will have Holy Communion. Uh, we will not allow the pandemic, we will not allow uh, trouble in the land to stop us from doing what Jesus commanded us to do. And he said, this do in remembrance of me. Although you may not be with us physically, you can share with us in Holy Communion by getting your elements together now. You have time at the conclusion of today's message we will share in our Lord's broken body and shed blood and I will bless those elements that you may have at home, your bread, your unleavened bread, whether it's a wafer or a cracker, whatever type of fruit of the vine you may have, grape juice or if it's just water we will bless it to the Lord where we will share in that ordinance that Jesus gave us to obey until he comes so I'm going to ask you to do that alright today I want to go readily into the word of the Lord and share with you a tremendous word from the Lord. I always get excited about the opportunity to come and to preach the word of Jesus Christ. And you can take advantage by coming here even in person and enjoy and share with us. We practice social distancing. We make sure the people of God are safe. We do the necessary guidelines to allow people to come and to worship in person. And you can even come and be with us yourself on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. at 3570 Weaver Road right here in Memphis, Tennessee. And then, of course, on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. from a remote location, our faith and deliverance service, our Bible study at 7 p.m. But on today, Sunday morning at 11 a.m., you will find us right here until the Lord says different. But now we go into the word of the Lord, the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians chapter 3. And I believe the verses of scripture that I'm about to read from the King James Version of the Bible would not be foreign to you. But you will be familiar with them as I begin to rehearse them in your hearing. 
as I began to read these scriptures. I pray that they will resonate in your spirit and that the Holy Spirit will move down in your soul as the praise team just said a moment ago. But the book of Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14. Again, the book of Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14. From the King James, James Version of the Bible, it reads, Brethren, count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, I believe I better read that again. Because I feel that all down in my shundo. I better read that one again. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Brethren and sisters, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want to share this thought with you for the few moments I'm going to speak from the word of the Lord and that is you've come too far to turn around. You've come too far to turn around. Oh, I know we're living in a day now of uncertainty. I know that we're living in a time when it seems like it's just so easy to give up. It's so easy to throw in the towel. And it seems like, where is God in the midst of all of this trouble, in the midst of calamities, in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of death, in the midst of political division, in the midst of racial tension, in the midst of economic hardship? Where is God in the midst of all of this? Well, I want you to know that you've come too far to turn around. When we think about where we are now, even on today, we're already in the month of November in the year 2020, and God has kept you from January all the way down now to November. And I know there have been challenges along the way. I realize that things have happened along the way, and nobody in their right mind could have told you in 2019 that we would have experienced the things that we are experiencing now and the things that we have experienced. But thanks be unto God uh, that we are still here. Thousands have died and thousands have been become ill. But thanks be unto God, whether you became ill or not, you are yet here and still alive. That's why I say you've come too far to turn around. Giving up should not even be an option. Throwing in the towel should not even be considered. And I realize that we're human. I realize in our own frailties, I realize we try to rationalize things. We try to figure things out and wonder why is all of this happening? And God, after all, you are Jehovah, you are Yahweh, you are Elohim, you are El Shaddai, you are God Almighty, and you can do anything. But it seems like maybe God is not listening. It seems like maybe God is on vacation. It seems like God is not concerned about his creation. But I want you to know that even when trouble comes in your life, that's the best time to hold on and not let go. I want you to know, as the saints of old used to say, you got to keep on keeping on. You got to keep on holding on. Why? Because they realize you have come too far to turn around. I dare you to look out the back door of your life. Think about how good God has been to you. Think about how God has kept you. How God has been there with you through the thick and the thin, even when it became dark and dismal in your life. When you didn't know what to do, you didn't know who to turn to, you didn't even know how you were going to make it. But yet, some way, somehow, God made a way. God stepped in and turned things around. God stepped in and made the devil behave. I know what the Bible says. The Bible says that when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard uh, against him. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is within the world. You have God on your side. 
the writer said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Well, as I began to read in this epistle, I began to read in the word of God what is left on record for our learning and for our knowledge. An epistle is nothing more than a letter that was written by one of the apostles and left on record for us to learn from. The epistles were written to the saints of God. They were written to cities and they were written to churches to teach the people of God how to live according to God's will. Well, this epistle is written by a man by the name of Apostle Paul. Paul is known for having such a tremendous conversion experience with Jesus Christ. You may recall that in his conversion, Paul was going about running havoc and making havoc in the church. He had received permission from the high priest to go about and to persecute the Christians. He thought he was doing the will of God, but he was going about doing it according to zeal, but not according to knowledge. It was there on the Damascus road that a light shined down from heaven and knocked him off his beast. And there in the dust of the ground, he heard Jesus say, Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thou me? He said, well, who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus of Nazareth. He said, it is hard for you to kick against the pricks. And Jesus began to use Paul in a mighty way, began to refer to him as being an apostle born in due season, out of due season. Paul began to go about on his missionary journeys. He had several journeys, but on this particular journey, it was his second missionary journey when he wrote this epistle, and what's amazing about it, he wrote it from prison. They're known as the prison epistles. You have Ephesians and Philippians and Galatians and Philemon. He wrote them while in prison. Isn't that amazing how the man of God can be in prison, but yet encourage the saints, yet can leave on record how we should press toward the mark. Paul could do that because Jesus had told him that I need you to be a witness for me, not only in Jerusalem, but also in Rome. So now Paul goes on his second missionary journey. He goes from Philippi to Thessalonica. He goes from there to Berea. He goes from there to Athens. He goes from there to Corinth. But while in Philippi, while in jail, uh, he writes this epistle to remind us where Philippi was a city founded by King Philip. King Philip was the father of Alexander the Great. But now he leaves on record while Paul is locked up in jail. I want you to know, it may seem like you're locked up and bound by the devil. But aren't you glad that the Holy Ghost can still come in? When it seems like it's night in your life, when it seems like you don't know what to do, you don't know where to turn to, but God still has a word for you. And I believe it is the word of God that will sustain us even now in these trying times because man will let you down. Man will confuse you, but the Bible says it is better to put trust in God uh, than to have confidence in man. The Bible says that his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. The Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Well, Paul, now, when we think about his resume, when we think about what gives him the gall and the audacity to talk about pressing toward the mark, because when we read about him coming up on scriptures, it was there when the Jews were stoning Stephen to death. And it was a young man known as Saul of Tarshish. And there he held the cloaks of the men while they stoned Stephen to death. But Stephen stopped dying long enough and looked up in the glory and saw Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father because Jesus was getting ready to avenge the death of Stephen. But Stephen said, forgive them, forgive them, Lord. And now Jesus forgives them for stoning Stephen to death. And Saul now goes about learning the law because he was a Jew, he was a Roman citizen, and he was a Pharisee. But he goes about now persecuting the Christians. But I want you to know, it doesn't matter what your past is. 
It doesn't matter what you used to be. But thanks be unto God, you come too far to turn around. Because the same God is willing to forgive you is the same God that's willing to use you. Now he begins to use Paul. He becomes a mighty man of God. God used him so mightily that he wrote most of the epistles in the New Testament. The only ones he did write would be the book of 1 Peter and 2 Peter. He didn't write 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. He didn't write the book of Revelation. He didn't write the epistle of James. He didn't write the epistle of Jude. And he didn't write Hebrews as far as we know. Some say maybe it was of the Pauline writings. But we don't know actually who wrote that epistle. But we do know who wrote Philippians. Because Paul lets us know who he is. And that he is writing this epistle. And I'm so glad that he leaves on record. Let's eavesdrop again on what the man of God says. He says, brethren, uh, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, I've been through some things, but I'm still on my way. I'm still trying to make it. Oh, I remember what the saints of old used to say. They used to say 99 and a half won't do because I'm trying to make 100. So Paul says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Well, let me stop right there. He's not saying forget how good God's been to you. He's saying don't let the devil hold your past against you. I'm, fit, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. But I'll never forget what the Lord has done for me. Somebody said you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. Somebody said Jesus, I'll never forget. How you brought me out. I'll never forget. No, never, Lord, I'll never forget. Well, just think about how good God has been to you. Who woke you up this morning, allowed you to be clothed and in your right mind, and started you on your way, looked over you all the night long. When ambulance were rolling, when the devil was busy, none came to your house. But thanks be unto God, he that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumber. And while you were asleep, you had a God watching over you. You had a guardian angel looking over you. And God was right there even while you were asleep and didn't even aware of what was going on. But thanks be unto God. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. I forget all the wrong things I've done because I don't ever want to go back to that. But I'm looking to God who is the author and the finisher of my faith. He says, forgetting those things which are behind, which and reaching forth unto those things which are before. In other words, I got to reach beyond where I am. I got to reach to God. I got to reach for my miracle. I got to reach for my blessing. I got to reach for my healing. Don't stand still. Don't sit in it. But he says, you got to reach for it. And it is right there before you. And right now, by faith, wherever you are, you ought to reach up right now and say, Lord, I'm reaching. I'm reaching for my healing. I'm reaching for my deliverance. I'm reaching for my breakthrough. I'm reaching for my miracle because the devil showing up is busy. But I declare, I thank God I've come too far to turn around. He says, reaching forth to those things which are before. And I press. Oh, that's a good place to stop again right there. He said, I press. In other words, I got to keep on, keep it on. Even through the trials and the tribulation, I got to press my way. Oh, I remember of a lady in the Bible. We know her as the woman with the issue of blood. And perhaps you've heard of her. And the Bible says that she had suffered many things and grew the worst and had an issue of blood for 12 years. And I believe 12 years is a long time to be bound. 12 years. It's a long time to be sick. Twelve years is a long time for the devil to be in your life. But the Bible says she heard that Jesus was coming. 
by the way and Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. He wasn't coming for the lady with the issue of blood because Jairus had come to him and said, Master, my daughter is sick and will you come see about her? And Jesus agreed to go to Jairus' house. But while he was on his way, the woman with the issue of blood for 12 long years, she began to press. There it is right there. Sometimes you got to press through the problem. You got to press through the trial. You got to press through the difficulties. You got to press through the circumstances. And I just believe in my sanctified mind while she pressed through the crowd. There were crowds around Jesus. The disciples were around Jesus. But I can imagine in my soul she told Nathaniel to get out of the way. She told Peter to get out of the way. She told James to get out of the way. She told John to get out of the way. She told Matthew to get out of the way. Because I got to get to Jesus. I've come too far to turn around. And the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment. And immediately, oh, I love that about God. Immediately, her blood flow stopped. And right there, Jesus, he stopped in the midst of the crowd and said, wait a minute. Somebody touched me. But the disciples in the carnal mind, they said, surely, master, with all of this crowd around you, surely somebody touched me. But I'm not talking about that kind of touch. I'm talking about a needed touch, a touch that needed a miracle, a touch that needed a healing, a touch that needed a a breakthrough because I felt the virtue leave my body and Jesus turned and turned around and there was the lady with the issue of blood that she had the issue but now she had been healed and he said daughter thou be healed and be made whole and while Jesus was talking to her one came from Jairus' house said don't trouble the master in any longer cause your daughter has died but Jesus overheard the conversation and told Jarius be not afraid but only believe in other words you've come too far to turn around and I don't know who I'm talking to be not afraid but only believe because Jesus will come in your life and Jesus will come into to your situation. They got to the house. Don't have time to deal with it because I got to get back to Paul. But while they're in the house, he put all the doubters out and took believers in with him. And they're in that house. He spoke a word over that Daniel. And I, I, I want you to know that God will speak a word over your life because you've come too far to turn around well, what is that word? Well, the word is, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody bless you like the Lord. The damsel was raised from the dead. But as I hurry on and finish this, I'm reminded of what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 57 through 58. But thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you missed a good place to shout right there. But thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I heard the songwriter said, victory, victory shall be mine. It shall be mine. And I stopped by on my way to glory to let you know that victory shall be yours. And the Bible finishes up and says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know 
that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I want you to know your tears have not been in vain because weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I want you to know that trial, that tribulation, it has not been in vain because God is getting ready to bless you. God is getting ready to help you because you've come too far to turn around. Well, how do I know that God will do just what he said? The praise team told you he's able to do just what he said. Well, let me give you a word. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly according to the power that worketh through us, according to what we think, according to the power that worketh in us. The power of God is working in your life. El Shaddai is working in your life. Jehovah Shalom is working in your life. Jehovah Rapha is working in your life. Jehovah Tishinu is working in your life. Jehovah Rahi is working in your life. The Holy Ghost is working in your life. He's over me. He's under me. He's around me. But he's in me. Because in the Old Testament, he was God over us. In the New Testament, he was Emmanuel, which is God with us. But thanks be unto God, he gave us the Holy Ghost. Anybody got the Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost down on the inside. Holy Ghost power. Power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Power to speak those things that be not as though they were. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And that's why I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Well, what is the prize? Yes, it is eternal life. But before I get there, he got other blessings for you. Before you get there, he got blessings with your name on it. He got a healing with your name on it. He got a deliverance with your name on it. He got a breakthrough with your name on it. He got a turnaround with your name on it. Yes, he will. Somebody said, won't he will? I said, yes. Yes, he will. Yes, he will heal. Yes, he will deliver. Yes, he will set free. I've come too far to turn around. Give God praise. Give God praise. You've come too far to turn around. And when I think of that, even with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, even before going back to glory, he realized he needed to go to the cross because it was there at the cross that all this would be made possible for us to live a victorious life in Jesus Christ. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. But before we go to our Lord's broken body and shed blood I want to ask you are you in a saving relationship with Jesus Christ if you're not in a saving relationship with Jesus Christ now is not the time to end your life without God in your life countless are dying day by day from sickness and disease and you need the Lord in your life the Bible says, what saith it, but the word is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth and thy heart, which is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession 
is made unto salvation. Right where you are right now, you can be saved just like that. You may not be in a formal setting. You may not be in a church building. You may not be in a place of worship. But wherever you are becomes your sanctuary. Your living room, your bedroom, your car, wherever you are, that becomes your sanctuary. And the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you have to do is realize where you are and be honest with God. And I'm going to pray for you. And as I pray, ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to come into your life like never before and make a new creature out of you. The Bible says, therefore, if any man or any person be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. I want to pray with you. And as I pray, pray for yourself. Do like David said, create in me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit in me. Purge me with his that I may be white as snow. Lord Jesus, I ask right now that you would look on those that are not in a saving knowledge of you. I ask right now, oh God, that you will forgive them of their sins. Come into their life. Cover them with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I ask, oh God, now, as they ask for forgiveness, as they realize they're not living a life that's pleasing to you, and just as Saul of Tarshish did on that Damascus road, he realized that he could not kick against the pricks. He could not fight the will of God. And he yielded his life over to you, Lord Jesus. And I pray now, oh God, as they yield their life to you, that you will come no more in their life and use them, oh God, to your glory in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. And it is so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. That's it, my sister, my brother. You are saved. When you ask God to forgive you of your sins through Jesus Christ, when you ask him to come into your life, you are saved now. But now you have to be taught how to live saved. You need to follow a Bible teaching church. You need to follow someone that's going to teach you the word of God. I thank those who view us who have become our virtual members. Whether you can come here physically or not, become a virtual member. Follow us. So I can teach you the word of God, teach you the principles and concepts of God, how to live a saved and victorious life. And when you do that, the devil will have no power or dominion over your life because he says, I've given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall harm you. So from this day forth, you are a new creature and you are saved. And all you have to do now is tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for saving that soul. Thank you, O oh God, for now writing their name in the Lamb's book of life. And we give you praise for them now. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen again. I ask you now to get those elements, those elements we had talked about, because it is the first Sunday of the month. And traditionally, we share in our Lord's broken body and shed blood. Before we came back into our building a few weeks ago, I was sharing virtual with you, Holy Communion. And we're doing the same today. If you have those elements ready to be blessed and consecrated unto the Lord, as we do what the Lord commanded us to do, even here in the sanctuary, the people of God will share in the Lord's broken body and shed blood, but we do it by all means with safety in mind where they have their disposable elements. And even there at your home or wherever you may be, I'm going to pray and ask God to bless those elements as we prepare to take of our Lord's broken body and shed blood. Now, eternal God, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, I ask now, O oh God, as we come to this table of grace and communion, first of all, O oh God, that you will look on us 
Help us to examine ourselves to see whether we be worthy, O oh God. Forgive us of our sins and all our wrongdoings. And, O oh God, bless these elements. Bless the unleavened bread, symbolizing, O oh God, the broken body of Jesus Christ. Lord, you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon us, and with your stripes we are healed. Now, O oh God, bless the unleavened bread. And, oh, God, bless the fruit of the vine, symbolizing your shed blood. For, oh, God, without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. And we thank thee, oh, God, for shedding your blood through your son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, we thank you for dying for our sins on Calvary's cross. And we thank thee, oh, God, and we do this in the remembrance of our Lord and Savior, yeah, God. Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. For I deliver unto you that which I received of the Lord Jesus Christ, that on the same night he was betrayed, yeah. he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this do in remembrance of me. Shall we eat of our Lord's broken body? And in the same manner, he took the cup, saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood. For as often as you shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do so forth the Lord's death till he comes. Shall we drink of our Lord's shed blood? Somebody said, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, And I know it was the blood. <laughs> it was my Savior's blood. 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 One day when I was lost. Blood came streaming down. <laughs> the blood, blood came streaming down. down. Go ahead, Pastor. The, the blood, blood, came, the blood streaming came streaming down. down. The blood came streaming down for me. Put your hands together. One day, one day when I was lost, he died. He died upon the cross. And I know, and I know it was the blood. You know what, Pastor? He never said a mumbling word, Pastor. Hey. He never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word. From judgment hall to judgment hall. Never said a mumbling word. They hung him high. Me. Stretched him wide. One day when I was, when I was lost, he, he died, died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood. Pastor, he's coming oh. back again. Hey, he's coming back again. He's, he's coming, coming back, back again. again. <laughs> yes, he is. He's coming back again. Mm. He's coming back again. For me. For me. Why? Because ah. when, I, when I was lost, he died upon the We're getting ready to let you go. But thank you for joining us on social media. Again, you can view us on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. as well as on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Don't forget to like and to share so others would know and be blessed. And thank you for all you do to support our efforts. And again, you can do that. I'll give you that information again before we let you go. By way of Greater St. Mark, Church of God in Christ, P.O. Box 19, Memphis, Tennessee, 38101. By way of Gillify, Greater St. Mark, Church of God in Christ. By way of Cash Out, the dollar sign, Greater St. Mark Coaching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dr. Ronald E. Roth Ministries. Continue to pray 
for the sick and bereaved, a number of individuals who have transitioned just since the last time we were together uh, with privacy for the family. I won't mention any names, but just be prayerful for the bereaved. Even on a national level, be prayerful for the bereaved. Ask you to continue to bless and to pray and to live a life that's victorious, victorious in Jesus Christ. I even want to remind you in these next coming days when you can elect to do what you have not done, your civic duty. And you know what I'm referring to. We're in the midst of a time of a national election. I'm referring to our country. And you want to ask to do yourself a favor and to exercise your civic duty and vote. Don't dare tell you who to vote for or how to vote. Just vote. Exercise your civic duty. And ultimately, God is in control. We don't put all our hope and trust in man. But we least do know that when we do our part, God will do his part. So again, thank you for being with us. The blessings of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Come on, let's get out of here with some good going home music, Brother Chris. Mm -hmm.